I am Kenny Anderson, Director of Multicultural Affairs for the City of Huntsville, and welcome to Impact. Each week we bring you information about exciting things that are happening right here in this community, and today will be no different. You know, one of my first loves is teaching and education. I spent many years as an educator inspiring young people to want to do better in life. So my guest today is someone who shares my passion. She is the founder and owner of an organization called Madison SAT ACT Inc. She's Dr. Pravina Comedy. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you for having me here, Kenny. It's good to have you today, and it's good to have this opportunity to chat with you about something that I know is very close and dear to your heart. And, you know, a lot of times when I talk to people, I really want to kind of know the beginning story, the origin mm -hmm. of where things came from. And you've got this awesome organization running right now, but talk a little bit to me about how it all began. Okay. Um, I was always an enthusiastic learner myself. Like, if you give me a math problem, I'll be like, let's solve it. That's not like me, by the way. I, mean, <laughs> I know. I I, that's why math. I said EI. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so I want, um, I love seeing that in the kids. Like, when they see math and they start complaining, I want like this. Like, what is bothering them there? I want to fix that. Um, I had an opportunity to, of course, get educated here in Alabama A&M University as well as in India. So I started seeing the differences, like how uh, the attitude towards education is, how the kids um, see what kind of examples they see when it is coming to them. And that got me hooked, I guess, and I wanted to be a teacher always. And I never knew that when I was growing up. So it bothers me actually now when I see the high schoolers deciding what they want to be in their life. I was like, did I know that? <laughs> I, I didn't know what I wanted to be, you know? It's just, right. it just fell in place and I kind of uh, discovered. Uh, so, I have uh, taught at many places here in Drake State, Alabama A&M, and Calhoun Community College, and now I work in Miles College. Mm -hmm. So, um, I had educators, I, mean, I think we are blessed to have that flexible schedule. So, I had time on me and I started volunteering at high schools, elementary school where my kids go, and I was a math team uh, coach for them for many years. So, I started seeing that attitude towards like what's happening, what's bothering them. Yeah. Uh, especially in high schools when I uh, used to hang out there during the lunchtime and whoever comes to me with any question, I used to just answer it. Uh, what kind of struck me was for the kids who are struggling, they had tutoring, they, were every, they had their system in place, a, uh, a procedure in place. Whereas kids who are trying to challenge themselves, taking honoring, honor classes or AP classes, if they have problem, there was nobody to help them. Mm. That kind of bothered me a little bit. Mm. You know, it's like it should be kind of equally spread everywhere. So I started doing that and I saw uh, slowly students were coming to me with ACT questions, SAT questions. And when I saw that test, I have never taken an SAT, ACT before. So when I saw that, it was like, it's an easy test. Why are they struggling to have this? Like, when I compared the school's tests and the curriculum they were doing and the ACT, I saw that there is a need for a prep to come into action because they're not taking the same kind of tests. It's the same things which are covered in it. The topics are same, but the way the questions are asked are different. The time pressure is different and they have to get used to that. That's the only way to have an ease at the test. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do a test prep. And I started Madison SAT ACT, where I do test preps. Uh, right now, actually, um, we do a test prep in Bob Jones as well as their after school program. Um, I have a lot of kids coming from everywhere, like Grissom, um, Lee High School, uh, even Athens High School, and a lot of places, and of course from Madison a lot because we are located in Madison. Sure, and of course, because the SAT and ACC is so critical to a young person's Definitely. success. This is a very valuable service that you provide. Mm -hmm. And the opportunities that you have to be able to share this information, I'm sure is appreciated by all. Definitely, definitely. Uh, actually, I work very closely with a lot of schools and uh, a lot of uh, organizations here too, actually. Uh, Junior League, they have a butterfly project. From that project, whoever I have selected, they always send me students mm -hmm. to come and take a prep, and I do that service free for them. Yeah. And I'm trying to do the same with Ruff and CAFY, yeah. <laughs> Cafe, sure. and all those. So um, as much as I can give back, then yeah. that's, that's a pleasure in 
knowing and being blessed with what I know, right? Of course, yeah. And so this, of course, began as something that you know, kind of emerged from your own passion, which is one of the places that most people always say is one of the best places that people can find that business idea or find that project that they've been trying to work on or find that talent or gift or that skill that they've been trying to nurture in some way. Mm -hmm. Just follow your heart. And obviously you've done that. That's correct. But this, uh, this initiative really has evolved into some other things as well. Talk yes. a little bit about that. That's correct. Um, so when I started that, I have seen, okay, it should be done more earlier. So I started looking for different franchisee opportunities and uh, I found Aloha. Uh, which is, it's an acronym, Abacus Learning of Higher Arithmetics. I know my British accent kicks in there, but <laughs> <laughs> so that uh, through their curriculum, I teach Abacus Math and uh, reading writing programs for elementary school kids. Mm -hmm. uh, from that, I was like, okay, I'm doing math, I'm doing English for the kids. There is something which needs to be done till they go to high school and college and do that interviews in a confident way. So basically they, have, they should be able to speak their mind out. So what can we do? So the public speaking came into picture and we had we started with competitions actually. So the competitions were very uh, well taken up and the kids were very enthusiastic to participate in it. So we started a club which was meeting every month and they were coming and learning different skills for public speaking every time. Then I wanted to take it to the next level. It's <laughs> <laughs> always the way it should be. So yeah. So I love TED Talks. Those are my lunchtime partners. Like as I'm eating <laughs> lunch, I want to have a TED Talk on and I listen to it. So I thought, okay, why not do it from the leader, right? Mm -hmm. So I approached them. I saw what, what's, what's happening there and they have something called TED Ed Club for kids. Mm -hmm. So we applied and we got approved and uh, we'll be starting from this spring. Um, the classes here in Madison, Aloha. And Madison is ACT, ACT. So it's like two things. That's why I was kind of, you know, confused to say what. Um, it'll be a free club for anybody in Madison County from eight year old to 18 year old. Mm. So they, we will follow the TED curriculum. Um, me and another instructor from our institute got trained by the TED people and we run the curriculum. So basically we'll help the kids to find their passion and find the big idea which they want to spread mm -hmm. through TED Talk, and then they will frame a talk, they will practice it, they will record it themselves, they will edit it themselves, and they will publish it on YouTube, of course. And the selected talks will go onto the TED Ed uh, website as well. And also we want to do every spring a TED style presentation here in Huntsville yeah, for all the kids. That sounds awesome, and I'm thinking about the transferability of the information that these young people are being exposed to. Because as an educator, I realize how valuable public speaking is and what an incredible tool is and asset it is for graduate students who have uh, left college now at a university and they're out there trying to get work. You know, They gotta do job interviews. That's one of the first public speaking arenas that they're gonna have in that capacity. Mm -hmm. Then when they go to grad school, perhaps, they're gonna have these opportunities to public speak. And then when they go to work, they're gonna have opportunities to public speak. And so public speaking actually becomes, for me, one of the core elements. Definitely. Of a it's it's so as important as math and reading. Yeah. That, that's right. And if you can't speak, I don't think you can really succeed to the extent that you may possibly have available to you. Now, you may have success, but I think your success can go so much further through public speaking, which then again incorporates reading and English and all these other skills. So I, it's got to be pretty exciting for you. It is. It is really, really exciting when I see the kids. Um, come up with their passions, especially like last class when we were talking about uh, what's your passion? And they were like, what is passion? Mm. And this was a second grade kid and I was like, uh, Miss Price, she was saying, what makes your heart beat faster? Mm. And the kid was so innocent and beautiful. He said, coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so like we all know coffee make, and he had a conversation I was like it's so beautiful and pure when it comes out of their minds <laughs> and children say the darndest things as said many years ago by yeah. Art Linkletter mm -hmm. <laughs> that, is, that is good that's priceless actually as you think about it definitely but it's actually definitely. correct that, that's co exactly correct I was like what can I say now right yeah. <laughs> it's not like it's wrong <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. You know, I'm sure that as you work with these young people, you come across uh, young people who are very talented. And I'm always in awe 
today of young people, this generation of young people who have been exposed to so much information. Um, there's never been a time in many of their lives where they haven't been connected to some technological device. Um, you know, in my day, back in the day, you know, I'd cuddle up to an encyclopedia uh, set and, uh, you know, kind of dive into those things and almanacs and other kinds of stuff to get my information, even dictionaries and the, the sources. Um, but young people have these things at their fingertip right now. There really is no excuse. That's correct not to be able to develop those kinds of skills beyond the point of um, the limitations that I'm, my generation might have had, you know, and my only limitation was that I would not seek it. So I maybe I had to go to the library to get that book, but now that stuff sitting right, not even, you know, you used to say it sits in your home. No, it sits in your hand because you're a mobile person constantly moving about from place to place mm -hmm. and you carry it everywhere you go. And I just wonder, as you work with young people today, what surprises you the most about what you see in terms of their potential? Uh, finding their passion way early in life because they are exposed to so much of information. But many times I see, I mean, it is definitely helping some of the kids who have a clarity of what they want to take, but it confuses them too a lot of times as well if you don't have a mentor. and. The mentor is so important and learning from parents especially i always say that to all the parents i see it's like do you uh, just sit with them and of course reading books is awesome but just share your stories from your childhood mm. you know, my kids always say like can you tell me that simple that silly thing you did with this uncle or you know this aunt and we kind of go back and rewind it and they, they have those little titles for the stories and what happened when and all that stuff yeah. so that, that's the way to uh, engage kids yeah. and uh, teach and pass on the values and the cultures we have. And that's very important. Um, I am all pro technology, definitely. I have a master's in computer science as well. So I, I can see where it is taking us. But I think for the kids, just leaving them with a screen, it might be in their hand or in front of them is not a good idea. Yeah. Uh, in our house, we don't switch on TV, mm. period. So, I mean, that that's definitely has its pros and cons. I'm, I'm, I definitely understand that. But I think we have to filter the things which are coming in front of them. Mm. Because they're sponges. You know, they t can take so many things in. And if we don't filter them right, I don't think it's a good idea. It's not intervening in their development. We definitely want them to blossom their way. But just seeing, I mean, we do that to our plants too, right? Yeah. You cannot like, put, put a bad water or whatever. We make sure the water is clean before we put in. And if we have to put a food or something, we make sure it's the right one for the right. Same thing for the kids. So yeah. many times when the parents say, you know, I, I let them choose, that kind of bothers me a little bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to let them choose, mm -hmm. but you have to make them understand what is right, what is wrong in this world. Right. Because there are so many things which are available right there. And they're sponges, they don't know. They, they will right. just take everything and go with the easy thing, which just not, might not be the best thing for them. That's right. Tell us where people can get more information about Madison SAT, ACT Inc. Uh, we have a website, we have a Facebook page, madisonsatact.com is our Facebook, oh, sorry, is our website. And Madison SAT ACT is our Facebook page okay. where we will have all this information about uh, the clubs coming up, the meetup and everything. Uh, and there is the applications right there because I, I really believe in kids earning the place. Yeah. I'm ready to give them free, but they have to earn the place in there. So they have to apply for it with a little essay and then uh, we will select the kids and we'll make them into groups depending on their passion and we'll go from there. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Dr. Pravina Komiti, thank you for being here with us thank today you. sharing all this great information about <laughs> Madison SAT ACT Inc. And we look forward to future conversations with you. Definitely. Thank All you right. very much. That's my commitment to education today. A great opportunity for your young people to get connected with their future success. We hope that you take full advantage of that. We also hope that you will like our Facebook page, which is Impact with Kenny Anderson, where you can see a video of the show that you just watched, as well as behind the scenes shots of what happens when the camera stops rolling. I hope that you have a great rest of the day. Until the next time, we'll see you soon.